Hello, today we'll be doing a 4L80 swap on my 2002 GMC Sierra. It is currently has a 4L60 in it and uh, it hasn't lasted. So I'll show you the parts that are needed for this specific model. And uh, yeah, that is it. So this truck is currently making 630 horsepower and 809 torque to the wheels. And uh, <coughs> stock, well, it was actually built. The 406E didn't last, so I had to do a 480. So, the parts you'll need on mine is four wheel drive, so I'll need this is the input shaft on the transfer case. It's a different spline on the 4L80E, so I'll have to transfer that into the transfer case. A new cross member, I think this is by Speed Engineering. It's for four wheel drive, they also make it for two wheel drive, and it was $168, I believe. So that should make it a lot easier. Here's the new 4L ADE built. It has Transgo shift kit, Coline, and Alto Red Eagles. And I have a Road Runner triple disc torque converter. They rate it 1200 horsepower. And we'll definitely be putting it through the test and I'll have a review coming on it later. So these are the parts needed. Um, also, you'll need a wiring harness so you can make your own. And you will need. Your rear, on this specific model, you'll need the rear drive shaft shortened, and you'll need a front drive shaft out of a Duramax, like an O2 to, I think, 2008. I'll put the correct one in the description. And that has not got here yet, and neither has a wiring harness, but we're going to start with the swap. I will not be filming pulling the transmission just because there's a million videos on it, and honestly, Mine's a little bit different because I have different lines, different exhaust, so it won't be exactly the same. So I won't be doing the initial pulling or putting in a new transmission, but I'll just keep you guys updated on issues I run into. Hello, so we got the transfer case for the, my uh, 2002 GMC Sierra. I got the 4L ADE swapped in. And now to put the transfer case on, we're gonna have to swap this piece out, which goes in this end like this. So we're gonna split it in half, pull it apart, and see what's going what it looks like and how big of a job it will be to put this in. Hopefully it goes pretty smoothly. So uh, wish me luck. Okay, so we got the 4L80 in. Now we'll do, put on the wiring harness. This is the adapter for the from the 4L60 to the 4L80. It's the same plug, but the wiring is a little different. So you can make your own, but I, it was just easier for me to buy one. And here's the sensor that's not in the 4L60. I think it's just a vehicle speed sensor. You gotta pin it into your ECU. And it pins 23 and 24, but I'll double check on that. And then now we're gonna put the transfer case in. This is what we had to change on it. So, spine's different on the 4L80E. Here's the old one. So yeah, that wasn't too bad, but, you know, it was still not fun. I'll show you guys. I don't know if you guys see that. So there's the 4L80 in. Here is the cross member. Hopefully you guys can see that, but yeah, it wasn't that bad at all. I will have to get a new dipstick, which I didn't realize, but that's okay. Other than that, everything should be pretty easy. We're about there. Mm 
Okay, so now we're going to do the wiring harness. So it says that, um, this well, this is for the input speed sensor, just so you guys know. You got two wires that came with the new harness, a red and a blue one. And then they go into, I don't know if you can see it, those two empty spots right there, which is 22 and 23. The red and black one will go into 22. The dark blue one will go into 23. Well, So we'll want to pop that off, which is a tab there and a tab on each side. Like so. Next, we'll pop those two wires in. Hopefully you guys can see that. <laughs> so this one, pop into 22. Maybe. Okay. Like so. See that? Yeah, it was a pain. Now, hopefully, as you get to see. Do this one. Oh, too far. That's it. That is it. Now it is zip tie them. Call it good. And now I'll have to get the PCM tuned. So this will go back like this, run some zip ties on that, and this shall go like this. Sweet. I have to throw some zip ties on that. And that's done. So next, all we have left is the drive shaft shortening. Show you what we got right now. Alright, grab the light. Oh, it's dead. Okay. So, we got the drive shaft, it is yay too long, so it's about an inch and uh, three quarters. Here's the whole truck by the way, B band, transfer cases in, that's in, I have steel braided lines for my tranny cooler, A and 6. Drain line for the turbo. So yeah, she's just about done.
Just gotta figure out a dipstick still, but I'll probably just get a stock one for a 2500. So yeah. That's it. Put the crossover back on. And there's the down pipe. I welded all this. And that's why the welds aren't perfect. But they're not bad. Drive shaft. You get the front drive shaft stone still and the uh, gear selector, but that'll be easy. So yeah, it's coming along. Here, a torque converter. Triple disc by Roadrunner. Hopefully it uh, does decent. Not a huge company, but that's what I kind of like. Something that's a little unknown. But they had good reviews, so we'll see how it does. Hopefully it holds up. There is the intercooler. That's better. So yeah, motor. I have probably seen a motor before, but yep. So yeah, it's coming along. Here's what the cross member is by Speed Engineering. We are about done with this entire swap, so got the fluids filled up. The only thing I was waiting on was the dipstick tube. But we got the drive shafts in, pretty much everything buttoned up every underneath, which I will show you. This is the exhaust. Bell housing's on. Yeah, I gotta put the bolts in right there, but I'll do that in just a second. Front drive shaft. Yeah, the boot on this new drive shaft's a little smaller, so I'm gonna put a new one on that. Here's the new shortened drive shaft. Perfect fitment. But yeah. She'll be fired up tonight. There's the lines. I think I showed you that already. Got a tranny cooler. So I got a big one on it. But yeah, I'm excited. And uh, I'll put the dipstick in. And I'll let you guys know when it's running. Hopefully I'm here in just a minute. So, some unfortunate news. Well, first of all, it won't start. I think my tuner flashed the wrong tune on my PCM when I took it up to him the other day, which has happened in the past, but I'm guessing that's what happened. So, we'll have to be making a trip back up there, but that's not the only thing. Oh, You guys can't see that little puddle right there. It's a pit gasket's leaking right there on the pan. So yeah, some unfortunate news for the truck. But yeah, we'll get it fixed. I guess I'm gonna replace this pan gasket. Don't ask me why, but it's like I said, I didn't build a transmission. I had it built. And so yeah, it looks like I'll be replacing the gasket. So yeah, I guess this is one step back, but hopefully we'll stop it done tomorrow. Swap the new gasket on, drain all the fluid I just put in, and hopefully take my PCM up tomorrow morning, and we should be rocking. So that's the next update, and uh, hopefully I'll actually get to drive this thing within the near distant future before I tip over and die from old age because it's taking so long. Oh yeah, we'll get there.